good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to answer questions posed to me by the Chinese uh, TV network. Uh, the first question is, uh, what achievements of deepened reform in China impress you the most for the past five years? I think uh, the, the most impressive development of Chinese uh, reforms uh, is that uh, Chairman Xi Jinping advanced a long-term strategy. I think it's the first time in modern times that uh, a state has such a long-term plan. Before, as we know, the Soviet Union and then China had five-year plans. But this time China has a plan for a very long period of time, almost 40 years. When Mr. Xi Jinping became leader of China, he advanced that plan and it's been executed, this plan. That's the first goal, as we know, it's 2021 when China will achieve the middle level of development. And uh, uh, the second uh, term is uh, 2049 when China will become one of the most developed countries in the world in every respect. And uh, uh, this is impressive in itself and it has made China a real locomotive of uh, world uh, development. Uh, specifically China, what is new and what is impressive is that China switches attention from exports, from going to other markets uh, uh, and, that, and now it puts an emphasis on internal development and China has a huge market and that market needs attention and needs money and, and everything else. So this is a very important uh, concrete achievement. Then another one is uh, balancing Chinese economy. As we know there were very big uh, disproportions between various parts of China in development. Maritime provinces versus internal provinces, villages versus cities, uh, different social classes had different uh, uh, revenues. Uh, now it's been changed and been changed uh, dramatically. And uh, a, a very important development is uh, new technologies. Chinese economy is becoming, in a real sense, an innovative economy, one of the most innovative economies in the world. Then uh, uh, financial uh, reform. Ch Chinese financial system was not very strong just a few years ago. Now I think it's becoming one of the best again in the world. Then there are big uh, achievements in the raising of level of uh, material life of uh, Chinese people. And uh, uh, all of this, of course, is impressive. And I could uh, go on talking about the achievements of Chinese economy, but I think uh, what I already said, uh, it gives the, the, the gist of, of my uh, view on the Chinese economy. That's number one. The, now the second uh, question is, uh, Xi Jinping recently said China will go forward with new spirit and striving. Why is spirit so important for a country? Well, spirit is important, of course, for any country because when people have a purpose, they work better, they know why they work and what they can achieve, get for this work, and it gives uh, optimism, to the whole, optimism to the whole society. And China is one of those states where this, uh, the question of spirit is especially important. We remember then in the uh, 40s in, uh, and the 30s and the 40s there was a fierce fight between communists in China and uh, Guomindang. And I think the, the main reason why uh, communists won that war, the civil war, and came to power because they had a, a view, they have a spirit, they had a uh, vision for Chinese people and uh, Guomindang didn't have any of that. And I think uh, China maybe is becoming the only country in the world which, which re has the spirit in a real sense and that gives it uh, a big advantage in development. The third uh, uh, question is, China has made great progress in anti-corruption for the past f five years. Will anti-corruption continue to be Chinese government's priority for the next five years? I think uh, so. Uh, of course, uh, China has made a lot of progress in fighting uh, corruption under uh, Mr. Xi Jinping, but corruption is still there and it will continue to be there. We know that in every country there is corruption 
It depends uh, only in different countries on to a different degree. Uh, the society is corrupted. In China it is, especially because it's a new market economy and the uh, market creates this additional conditions for corruption when some people have a lot of money and have a lot of stake in uh, putting this money into production and making more profit and uh, uh, there is a big temptation on, on their part to give uh, bribes to, to officials and uh, there is a big uh, incentive for officials to take bribe. But as I said, uh, China is moving ahead in this uh, field and uh, I think China will succeed finally. Uh, I remember when the China started economic reforms, not many people outside China believed in the success of those reforms. But Chinese proved to the whole world that uh, they, they can make those reforms successful and they uh, make those great achievements in the economic reform. Then when Mr. Deng Xiaoping died, there was uh, a lot of talk abroad that China uh, politically was in trouble, that uh, uh, chaos, chaos will prevail in China after the demise of uh, Mr. Deng Xiaoping. Instead of this, China worked out a unique system of transition of power and it works. So for the second time, China proved that the outside world, when it was skeptical about China, was wrong and China was right. And I think the same now happens with corruption, fight against corruption. There are quite a few observers abroad in various countries who doubt that China will succeed in uh, winning over corruption. But I think China will prove again for the third time that uh, outsiders are wrong and China is uh, right. But the fight is still on and will continue not only for five next years, but I think uh, uh, further down the road. Question number four. It's reported that China's tone is set for the next five years after China succeeded in standing on her feet and becoming rich. She will enter the third stage of a strong country. What do you think makes a strong China? Well, first of all, it's a strong, dynamic and innovative economy. Uh, if China can uh, uh, beat uh, competitors in this uh, competition uh, for innovations, uh, then uh, China will have a strong economy. And I think China has uh, all uh, possibilities to, to have such an economy. It's number one. Number two, it's a stable political system. And to, for the system to be stable in the long run, China has to move ahead with its uh, democratization and other um, political innovations. And China does this, I think. Uh, number three, China has to have a, a social justice. And this uh, fight against corruption, which we discussed, and attempts to balance uh, uh, different areas of, of the country, different social classes in the economic policy of the, of the government, of the Chinese leadership, it uh, uh, can uh, uh, guarantee such a uh, social peace in China. So this is number three. And uh, number four, it's uh, for China to, have, to continue to have peaceful, flexible, open foreign policy to contribute to peace and uh, stability in the world. China does it, and if it continues to do it, then it will guarantee that China, uh, it will be one of the most important components of China being a, a strong country and one of the leaders of the world. So it's economy, political system, social justice, and peaceful and flexible foreign policy. Then, uh, what do you expect of China five years from now? What breakthroughs would China make in the next five years? I think the main breakthrough will be in the uh, field of innovations, in the in technological fields. China, uh, I'm sure, will uh, catch up with the United States and other leading economies in being an innovative economy. And this is uh, the most important thing now. We see this progress in technologies. It, uh, uh, goes very fast and uh, if you stop, if you're slow, then you're behind. And China uh, is not about to be, to be behind. I think it's one of the great achievements that uh, await China in the next f uh, five years, in the foreseeable future. And I also uh, presume that it's going to be a lot of progress in uh, developing this idea of new Silk Road and uh, uh, maritime Silk Routes. Uh, it, it already helps China to promote its infrastructure, to promote its economic development, uh, in general to develop western parts of China. 
and uh, maybe outside China the successes are not so pronounced as yet because of the reluctance of some other countries, the inability to join this process. But I think step by step China will continue to push ahead with its idea and uh, uh, it, in the next five years it can achieve, uh, I think, great deal not only inside the country along the Silk Road but also outside its country with its neighbors. And question number six, if you have been to Shenzhen before, could you please tell us your impression of the city? What role will Shenzhen play in boosting China's economy? Well, I visited uh, uh, Shenzhen a number of times. For the first time I was in Shenzhen in 1982. Uh, the new policy, open policy for Shenzhen just started. At that time it was still a little village with a lot of uh, uh, border troops and things like that. So it was the beginning. and. Uh, it wasn't very impressive at that time. I came back to Shenzhen in 1985 and already I saw a big, a big uh, transition from a little village to a, a big modern city. Already by that time there were investments, uh, huge investments in Shenzhen and Ch Ch Shenzhen already had an uh, industrial base and uh, infrastructure and even at that time it was already uh, and a, a, a locomotive for the development of the other parts of China. And then I visited Shenzhen in uh, recent times, in the, quite a few times, and now it's one of the most developed and striking cities in the world. It's a, a megapolis. And in some ways, it, I think it overshadows Hong Kong, because in uh, uh, Hong Kong, infrastructure industries are uh, uh, traditional, of course, uh, Hong Kong develops, but uh, it still have this old uh, uh, industrial, financial, everything else, I mean, traditional. And in Shenzhen, everything is brand new and it impresses me very much. And I think uh, it continues to play the role of locomotive of development of Chinese economy and Chinese uh, as a country, China as a country in general. Thank you. <laughs>